Well, I missed you at breakfast. I got an early start, so I could take Colby to the petting zoo this afternoon. No, why don't I revise my schedule and uh, join my two pretties? Whatever. Sure. <laughs> Unless uh, Jake Martin's going to be there, of course. Oh, you know, it's pointless to have another go around with this. Jake is Colby's father. There's nothing you can do it's to change a, that. It's amazing to me how you managed to work that into every conversation. Adam, it's a fact of life. I accept it. Eliza, I love that little girl, and I want to be part of her life, a big part, in a way that I could never be with, with, uh, with uh, Haley and, and, and Skye and Junior. Well, no one is shutting you out. No, no one is... Jake has made it quite clear that he doesn't want me to be any part of raising Colby. And you've sided with I have not sided with him. When there are issues concerning her welfare, her future, those are decisions that should be made by me and by Jake. But, but I have no say in them whatsoever. What if, uh, when she gets older, what if she yeah. points to me one day and says, Mommy, who's that man over there on the sofa? What's wrong with being her stepfather? What? As it's defined in this family, it's one giant step away from Colby, a, a giant step down. All rights and, and responsibilities revoked, all paternal instincts denied. Oh, based on what? On the fact that Jake's name is on Colby's birth certificate. But I am her father! But I mean... I feel like her father. In every way that counts. Oh, wait. We're not finished. <clears throat> Liza Chandler. What? Well, wait, wait, wait. This is legit? You're kidding. Uh, no, no. Uh, please, let me know. Thank you for calling. What was that? It was Jake. D Dimitri Merrick has, has disappeared. I into the ocean. They, they think he's dead. The Coast Guard is looking for his body. He's dead again? Apparently. So, Dr. Ray, <laughs> it's okay with you. I think we got time for one more phone call. Great. Good. Go. Hello, caller, are you there? Hello, caller, you're on the air with Dr. Ray Cummings. Hello? Yes, hello. Um, welcome to the cutting edge. I am I on there? Yes, you are. How can I help you? What's your name? Um, uh, Ruby. I got a question for Dr. Ray. Uh, Ruby, forgive me, but your voice sounds awfully familiar. It does? Oh, uh, folks tell me I sound a spitting image of Dinah Shore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your problem, Ruby? Uh, well, um, my no-good ex and his new wife are doing their level best to ruin me and my reputation. What exactly is it that they're doing? They're spreading lies. They're bad-mouthing me around town. That she-devil even got my best friend to turn on me. What do you think of them rotten apples? Well, I don't think you should pay attention to what they say or do. Uh, if they want to, uh, sling mud, your ex and his wife, then they're the ones that are going to look dirty. But what about my friend? Well, your friends, if they're your real friends, are going to stand by you. And if they don't, then who needs them, right? And, Ruby, remember, living well is the best revenge. Uh-huh. Well, thanks for reminding me. Bye. So long, Mama. I love you. Oh, honey, I love you. I'm sorry. Got her. Um, well, the hour has just flown by. Is there any chance we can con you into coming back and doing this again? <laughs> I would love to. Terrific. You want to do me a favor? Sure. Sign off for us. If you're here and you're hip, and if it's happening, you're on the cutting edge. <laughs> She's better than I am. I am not. <laughs> bye, folks. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. And we're out. <gasps> Bravo. Oh, Come here. You were terrific. Oh, Just thank terrific. you. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Was that really your mother? Yeah, uh, one of them. Yeah, poor Opal, huh? Yeah, she's okay. She's just going through a rough time. I swear, every time we open the phone line, she calls up with a different alias. Oh. Pearl or Jade or Jewel. She sounds like a real character. Oh, you've no idea. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much. 
for schlepping down here from Landview, especially after what you've been through. I would schlep for you anytime. <clears throat> and Dixie, it's a real pleasure to meet you. Oh, thank you. And whatever the two of you were doing, just just keep it up. Right? <laughs> okay. It's my mantra. <laughs> yeah, I thought oh, so. What fun it is to laugh. Great show. Well, oh. I was wondering when you were going to make an appearance. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Dr. Ray Cummings, this is the Liza Colby Chandler. Mm. Hello. Nice, Hi. To, meet nice to meet you. I'm a big fan. My husband's a fan. Thank we were watching you. backstage. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah. Actually, uh, words like feelings and relationships, usually he goes running for the television <laughs> to change the channel. Well, that's a typical male response. Yes. Yeah, but he sat there. He didn't even fidget. Wow. Well, that's great. High praise. Thank <laughs> you again. Listen, I'm sorry. You know, I really have to run, but I could use a telephone maybe before I leave. Oh, Is sure, sure. My office, uh, double doors. Go right through there. First double door doors. on the right. Restaurant the right. I'll yes. find it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, both of you. All right. Thank you. And nice meeting nice you. Nice meeting you. Thank you. See you. Bye. Well, oh. follow you in the car. So cool. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Bye, Liza. Bye. Bye. Hello, Liza. David, what are you doing here? Dr. Cummings. Adam Chandler, right? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I understand you enjoyed the show. Uh, your wife told me that you usually don't go in for that touchy-feely sort of thing. Well, most of it's mindless psycho babble, but uh, you seem authentic. Thank you. People, I think, want three things, to be validated, accepted, and loved. I just can't figure out why we always make everything so complicated. Mm. The nature of the beast, I suppose. Ah, yeah. You know, that kind of reminds me of someone. Daniel Faulkner. I think you know him, don't you? Know him? I hate, despise, and loathe him. He's a backstabbing liar and a thief. I had a feeling we might agree. Hmm. Yes. How do you know him? Well, that backstabbing, lying thief happens to be my husband. I, I can't. I'm, I'm swamped. I was just following up on that stem cell business. Oh, uh, that really doesn't concern you. Well, Edmund did get me involved, so I was wondering if the procedure was a success. Um, obviously, you haven't heard that Dimitri died. Or at least he's missing and he's presumed dead. I had no idea. His family must be devastated. Oh, I imagine, yes. Well, perhaps if Colby's genetic material had been compatible, then... No, it was. At least it was close enough to greenlight the treatment. So you ran the tests? All the genetic tests? We ran the tests. You know, <laughs> I'm really busy. I'm sorry it didn't work out. I know that Adam was just not too thrilled about giving away Colby's stem cells. Well, Adam is not Colby's father, Jacobs. And, and he was fine with it, really. And I have work to do. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, Adam. You dodged another bullet. Let me try and shorten an ugly little story. My husband didn't come home one night. And silly me, I decided to do a missing persons report. And several days later, when the police showed up, I... I really did expect the worst, but Daniel wasn't dead. He had just skipped town with all the money he had taken from his investors. Oh, yes, a consortium of heavy hitters. Yes. Myself among them. I'm afraid you were taken in by a real con artist. Yes, well, his portfolio and his uh, credentials were quite impressive. I know. If it makes you feel any better, he took a big chunk from me, too. Hmm. You know where he is? No. I was hoping you would. No, I put my people on it. They didn't come up with anything. As far as I'm concerned, it's a, just a bad business deal. You you never filed charges? Faulkner had too big a head start. Oh, come on. You haven't just given up, I hope. I tell all my listeners that the bad guys never win. What makes you assume I'm not a bad guy? <laughs> 
Well, let me put it this way. I think I'll take my chances, if it means that I'll see my husband again, behind steel bars. All right, I'll help you if I can. Good. But I'd appreciate it if you'd keep it to yourself. My credibility could be damaged if word got out that I had been taken by your husband. I understand. Hmm. Dr. Ray, I see you've met my husband. When you guys look awfully chummy, did you find that you two have something in common? I was about to ask Dr. Ray if she'd run into Skye in Landview. Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. Ah, oh, what a beauty. Mm -hmm. At war with herself. I just hope she can work through her marital problems. She's married? Oh, I'm sorry. I just assumed you knew. No. It's a bit of shock, actually. Well, it, it, it seems to be for her husband as well. I, I am sorry. I, I don't have any of the details, really. Damn it. She's my, I'm her father. She should... I should be the first to know, not the last. Adam. Adam. No, not now. My daughter needs me. The only one who does. Well, I... I think I'd better be going. It's a long drive back to Landview. Actually, what were you and my husband whispering to each other? The subject when it doesn't suit him. Husbands and wives really shouldn't keep secrets from each other. Well, then why don't you tell me yours? Would you be offended if I made an observation? You don't trust your husband. You shouldn't be surprised by that, because this is what I do for a living, and I'm actually pretty good at it. <laughs> Except, do you ever hear that old saying, doctors who treat self have fool for a patient? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's me. You really do want to know what I was talking to your husband about, don't you? I don't know, do I? Okay. We're strangers. Connected by a, a twist of fate. What's the connection? My husband, Daniel, conned both of us. And then one day, he just disappeared. And I don't know why. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. So am I. Truth is, I... I should have known who he was. You know over scrambled eggs one morning when he didn't act quite like himself or at night when I reached out and he pretended to be asleep. I ignored all the warning signs. But Daniel didn't lie to me. I lied for him. I lied to myself. Love can't live on lies. But I think you already know that, don't you? If you're having doubts about Adam, you make him tell you the truth. It'll save you a lot of heartbreak. this I hear about you getting married? Never mind. Is it true? Why am I always the last person to hear about these things? Well, who's the lucky groom? Now, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm being a father-in-law. A doctor? My God, you're trying to find yourself another kinder? Me well, like that. Well, it's our bedroom. <laughs> Who were you expecting? You scared me. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't have to be afraid of me. No. You could have fooled me. You, you have been so irrational lately. And you know, my gut just keeps telling me that there's something that you're keeping from me. 
Like what? I don't know. Why don't you tell me? Why don't you tell me the truth? Tell, tell me why you had to make a scene at the hospital in front of Jake when we were giving Colby cells to Dimitri. I, I've apologized for that. Why can't we just forget it? No, no, we can't forget it. I don't want to forget it. I want you to tell me. You know I love Colby. Yes, I, I, I do. You know, Dr. Ray said to me that I should ask you. I should ask you to tell me the truth. That, that, that love lives for the truth. Now, Ray Cummings, you, you were discussing our marriage with that doctor? No, she made an observation. An observation that I don't trust my husband. She's a professional busybody. She's paid to find trouble where is it? Where there is Denny. Oh, really, trouble. So there's no trouble. Nothing no, is the matter. Nothing is nothing. With the possible exception of, of Jake Martin constantly being in my face with information on what I should do and not do with you know, Colby. Adam, you are the one who is acting so possessive. You know, I will give Dr. Ray credit for one thing. Her information is correct. What information? Sky. Sky just got married. In Las Vegas, of all places. Well, to whom? An Elvis impersonator? No, a doctor from Landview. And yet she, and she made another announcement. She will never again accept money from me. Well, Adam, but... she married a doctor. Maybe she doesn't need your money. Oh, of course she does. Whose side are you on, anyway? I'm not taking sides with anyone. Anyway, so, so what if Skye got married? She never told me. I never met the man. She probably didn't think that you'd approve, Adam. You've never approved of anyone that she's ever been with. I, I'm her father, Liza. I, I should have been there by her side. <laughs> you what? So you can ruin her wedding? I mean, you, you, you lock Haley up in the house. I did and, no and, and such thing. And you can't approve thing. of Sky's wedding. That's not. It's like the you have point. to control all your grown children's lives. I mean, God help Colby. She's not even your real child. The minute I turn my back, you're you gonna stop and make it back. What has gotten into you? What has gotten into me? I'll tell you. What's gotten into me is, is, is one too many run-ins with Jake Martin. Right, well, I... Just keep your voice down. I don't want to wake Colby. You, your voice. How humiliating it is for me to stand here and listen to that young pup tell me that Colby's welfare is none of my concern. And have him horn in on my time with her and have his brother Egg him on to take even more of my precious time away, like that, that stupid Martin Pickney. And you know what makes it even worse? Is you are going along with them. Would it be too much to ask for a little bit of loyalty? I have loyalty to my daughter. You are being a selfish and paranoid stepfather. Come back, please, Liza. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I... I Colby is my daughter. In every way that counts. I love her. I would do anything in the world to protect her. I know that. It was your idea that we put Jake's name on Colby's birth certificate. Yeah. Yeah, because you convinced me that as far as you were concerned, I was Colby's father, for always. I know, but it's it's not that simple, Adam. Jake has rights. I know, I know. You don't need to keep saying that. I know, I know that, I know that. I. It's just, I feel like I'm invisible. You and Jake making all the decisions. I, all I want, I'm desperate to be part of her life, Liza. It's the desperation that worries me, Adam. That's why I'm so upset about, about Skye's marriage. Once again, she took a huge step in her life without me. I know, I know that's hurtful. Hurtful? No, hell, it's not hurtful. It is way beyond hurtful. It's devastating to me. I never had a chance to be a father with Skye. I never had a chance with Haley. I've lost my chance with Junior because I didn't get custody. But with Colby, I'm in from the very beginning. Right from the start. 
And my love for her is going to grow every day I'm alive. And so will hers for me. And it will be unshakable. I don't care how many times you and Jake remind me that I'm not her father. Little one, that glowing compliment came from the man that your mommy is going to marry. And he's going to be your father, and we're going to be a wonderful family. You've given me a tremendous gift. A second chance. And I feel that way, too. I want you to be the father of this child, Adam. I already see you as her father in all the ways that really count. You know, I don't think that you need to worry about Colby's love for you because she's going to know what a great father you are. And she's going to know that you changed your life just because you loved her. I was on my way down for Brandy. Could I bring you something? I'm sorry. I never should have broken my promise. Sometimes I, I just think the worst of you. And it's not fair because you've never done anything. I mean, I know that you can still draw blood in the corporate world, but as far as Colby's concerned, You've been so good. You you love her. Everything that you've done for her is because you love her. We both said too much already. you drop out of my life the way I did Sky. No. Or fight with you the way I do Haley. You and I are going to be as close as a father and a daughter can be. We will understand each other's hearts. open, so I thought I'd bring her in here. <laughs> you ever seen anything as beautiful as this little angel of ours? She looks more like her mother every day. Why don't you just go 
Oh, it's just a regular pediatrician appointment. No, I am staying right here. I told Colby I promised her that I would be with her all the way to keep that doctor from sticking her with one of those nasty needles. Well, right? don't make a promise you can't keep. Well, if he has to do it, I'll distract her by playing piggy with her toes. Mm. That way it won't hurt so much. Well, you know what? I got a better idea. Why don't you just pay someone to take the shot for her? Oh, if that would work, I'd do it myself. <laughs> I know you would. <laughs> we can only keep all the pain away from you your whole life. Uh, we'll try to do that as much. What's, uh, what's up? Something wrong with Colby? No, no, just a regular pediatrician appointment. Oh, mm. I didn't know. Yeah. You know, actually, I have a, a few questions for that guy. Hello, Jake. Hi. So, what time's the appointment? Um, ten minutes mm. or so. Good. I just have a couple patients I need to see, and then I'll come right over, okay? Uh, don't. Not now. Don't. Oh. What? I don't come. Not this time. What's going on? I'd, I'd like to go to her checkup. Uh, uh, Liza, I, I, if he wants to stay, it's... it's, uh, it's no, uh, um, I'll tell you what. Why don't you put us on the admitting list? That way they won't skip over us. There's no need to make an issue of this. I want to talk to Jake. Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye. You know, every day is something new with him, but, but you... I don't get it. Now, you don't want me to go to her checkup? I just, I want you to give us a little bit of space so that Adam can be a father, too. He's going to, no, he's not a father. I'm her father. Jake, you are Colby's biological father. Nothing, nobody can take that away from you. Colby is a Martin, and every day... When I, when I think of Joe and, and Ruth as her grandparents, I think she's the luckiest girl alive. And you take advantage of it. What? Wow. Yes, How? yes you, you show up at all hours to see her, and I let you see her. You take her on days that aren't your days to see her. Now, if you were my ex-husband instead of my good friend and sperm donor, you would never get away with it. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the more time she spends as a Martin, the better for her. You, you just, you just said that. You are not making it a comfortable place at home. I, I, I'm, Adam's level of comfort is not my concern. Well, it should be, because Adam is my husband. And Colby is going to live under his roof for a lot of years, Jake. And we have a very important choice. We can either let Colby grow up in a house where there's this stranger and she's afraid of him, or we can give him a little space and let him show her some love and some genuine affection. Mm -hmm. You're pulling that, that wisdom of Solomon <laughs> thing on me. I know it. Mm -hmm. All right, fine, fine. Okay. Go, go to the appointment. But please, call me later. Tell me what he says. I'm a very wise father. I'm gonna pick your brain. Pick away. I'm doing a segment on heart disease. It turns out it's like the number one killer of women in America. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm looking at this uh, questionnaire filled out by women who uh, all were taken to an emergency room complaining of chest pains, and half, over half of them actually stated that they felt their complaints were taken seriously. Is that your experience? My ex What do you think? I'm a tall woman that is all in her head? Relax, Dr. Kildare. I'm not talking about you personally. L look, man or woman, I treat all my patients' complaints very seriously, Tad. Well, that's terrific. I'm glad to hear it. You want to come on the show and throw a chair at me? I'm sorry. I'm just kind of a rotten mood right now. No kidding. What's your problem? Liza. She called me out on the carpet for spending too much time with Colby. She thinks I'm overstepping my boundaries. Well, that's a hell of an about face. Why the change? Adam, she says he needs more daddy time. 
so I said I would back off a little. No way. You're not going to do it. This week, the haunting takes a shocking turn. My mother had nothing to do with this. Then who did? Oh, my God. Jessica's out of control. When is it going to stop? Do you have something that you want to tell me? How far will Jessica go for revenge? I can't find her. What do you want? Don't miss One Life to Live, ABC Daytime. If you're not careful, Adam's going to have Colby evicting widows and orphans before she can walk. You're right. I can't back down when it comes to my daughter. I'll speak of the devil. Liza just walked in. Sorry, I'm late. Pediatrician. Hey, hey Tad, this is between Liza and me, so keep your mouth shut, all right? Yeah, that's nice. Bye. Who's that? Jake. Oh, I just had a long talk with him. Yeah, so I heard. I take it you were able to swing him around to your point of view on things? He's a pretty reasonable person. Well, lucky for Jake, he's got a brother who isn't. Okay. How'd you pull it off, Adam? What, no, Avery? Oh, come on, you know what I'm talking about. You dodged another bullet with that stem cell therapy situation. The cells matched. That's all they needed. No more tests required. Hmm. Lucky you. Although there are still a few of us that know your nasty little secret. Hmm. Liza and I are happy now. We're um, a family. You promised you'd keep your mouth shut. Yeah, you're right. I did promise that I would keep my mouth shut. But I never said, till death do you part. You are one of the most brilliant, talented, intelligent people I've ever met in my entire life. But when it comes to your husband, you haven't got the brains God gave geese. Somehow he just sucks you into his little rap. I am perfectly capable of protecting my own daughter. You know, it's a good thing you don't have to do it alone. I appreciate that, Dad. No, you don't understand. It's not a friendly offer. I just want to give you a warning. A uh, warning? Yeah. Neither Jake nor I trust you to stand up to Adam when it comes to children. I don't care what Adam says. I'm going to keep an eye on Junior. And no matter what you think you were able to convince Jake of, he's not going to back off on Colby. Sounds. Mmm. <laughs> Jake's here. No scenes, please. No, no. There won't be any. Mm. Since you've given me a chance to be a perfect father to our little girl, I will be as gracious as possible to Ted and Jake and the whole Martin Cabal. Ooh, the whole Martin clan. Fall for Kobe. That's a promise. Well, here's my chance. With luck. You said you'd be perfect. Your word. Shall we? <laughs> Just as I thought. A bunch of monkeys in penguin suits. Ah, oh, look. There's the head chimp himself. OK, we made an appearance. Can we go home now? Can you do me a favor and just try to behave? Sure. Want to go upstairs, find a linen closet, get really filthy? Martin, planning to hang glide from the balcony? No, I think I'll keep my feet firmly planted on the ground tonight, Millie. Thanks for the idea. <laughs> Congratulations on your 50. Yeah, um, not many people make it to uh, the big 5-0. Yes, well, you just keep this young man in line, and pretty soon you'll be celebrating your 50th. Millie, have you seen Greenlee? She and young Chandler seem to have disappeared. Well, of course they have, dear. Don't you remember what we used to do when we were their age? <laughs> Lucky for us, that sitter loves to watch TV. Yeah, she didn't even look up when we left. This is so cool. Are you sure we won't get in trouble? Nah. Dad said this place is going to be a real snooze, nothing but a bunch of old fogies. What's a fogie? Pam, Pam, go. Remember how Dad said he wanted something really fun to happen? Well, that's what we're going to do. Help the grown-ups have fun? Big time.
brought him? Green, huh? Watch this. Someone of our new neonatal unit was extremely generous. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What were you saying? Without your support, I really think we would have had to mount. <laughs> Excuse me, you have to excuse my husband. He, he's still frisky at this age. Oh, oh my God, it's a rat. Oh, heaven's sakes. Oh, heaven's sakes. I believe Do it's so. a ferret. What? What? Did I hear someone say ferret? It's all right. Isn't the ferret from next door? Coincidence? I think not. If the ferret is here, who brought him? Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe oh, 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 oh. right from the beginning. Oh, no, Millie, I'm afraid petty zoos are out of my repertoire. <laughs> oh. Come on. Get in here, both of you. <laughs> you are in such big trouble. You got some explaining to do. How'd you know it was us? Well, Charlie here was my first clue. It's time to smuggle you guys out of here before it hits the fan. What'd you bring him in? This. Yeah, okay, yeah. we are all leaving right now. I'm gonna go say our goodbyes. Excellent. Junior? What are you doing here? Uh, everything's being handled, Adam. Junior is fine. We're all going home now. Going home now. Were you responsible for that for that ruckus a minute ago? Was he? Well, I thought I recognized a little furball. Adam, it's over, okay? Relax, don't blow a no, gasket. No, can it, Martin? What's he doing here, uh, creating this kind of commotion? Dad, Jamie and I were just helping Ted. Yeah, Dad said the party was going to be really boring, and he wished something fun would happen. Well, something happened, I'd say. Way to go. I'm sure you would approve. Martin, I'd like to talk with you alone. By all means. Oh, oh. Uh, you two boys, stay. Sit. Hold on tight. Your idea of being a good father? Encouraging that kind of ridiculous behavior? Oh, you think it's very funny, don't you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, I, I don't condone it, but it was nothing. It was a childhood prank. He I'm not going to terrorize him over it. They deserve to be punished. Well, I'm sorry, Adam. I'm, I'm fresh out of leg irons. You're raising him to be an idiot, Ted. No. No, I just want him to enjoy his childhood while he's got a chance. Is that so wrong? If it were left to you, you'd probably try to grind it out of him, trying to turn him into some kind of clone. And that's not good parenting, Adam. That's just ego. Well, I don't think he knows the difference. I know the difference between good parenting and conspiring to steal my children. For God's sake, now you sound paranoid. Look, you were the one that stalked our family picnic. You were the one eavesdropping on private conversations. What? It's true. We, we found him in the... <laughs> we found him in the bushes. No, no. Junior found him in the bushes. Now you tell me. Who looks like the weirdo in this picture? If you'll excuse us, I think it's time for us to go home. You were hiding in, in the... Please tell me the tag was hallucinating. Uh, I was... I was in the neighborhood. Adam I stopped... Chandler. Hiding, skulking in the shrubbery so you could spy on your daughter and the Martins? Will you let me explain? This is your idea of being a perfect father to Colby? I'm sorry for letting out the ferret and scaring all your guests. And I'm sorry for putting the fake frog in your punch. No, that's all right, dears. My husband Woodruff was probably doing the same thing when he was your age. Maybe not. Well, I hope it didn't ruin your party. Oh, heavens, this vet will be the talk of the town for the next two weeks. Like father, like son, eh? Mm. I hope not. 
Hi there. <laughs> well, boy, oh boy, that was one exciting episode you had planned for us here tonight, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Mm-hmm. You want to tell me about this tonight? Well, I thought I was helping Junior help Dad have some fun, mm -hmm. but I wasn't. Mm. I want you to promise me you are never going to do something like this again, okay? I promise. Okay. Mm. Let's a, go. I've got a list of better excuses to use next time. Nice. Okay, listen. Mm. Are you mad at me? No, of course not. I pulled a stunt or two when I was about your age. I'd like to tell you about it sometime. About tomorrow. What do you say? Just you and me. Okay. Here, give me a hug. Yes. Here. See you tomorrow. dog with ketchup and oh, sauerkraut. Hot dogs are full of preservatives and God knows what kind of meat. You just said that I could have anything I want. Well, but not, not junk food. Try something else. The chili dogs, they're my favorite. Tad makes them every Saturday. Sometimes for the whole soccer team. And he uses uh, Grandma Kate's recipe. Uh, it's been in the family for years. Bring him the salmon and a salad, please. Very good, Mr. Chandler. Pardon? I'm sure you'll like it. Did you eat grilled fish when you were my age? You're mad at me because of what I did last night. That's that's why we're having lunch, isn't it? All right, got right to the chase. I like that. That's good. Yes, yes. We're here to discuss your behavior last night. Sneaking out after dark, and crashing an adult party. Letting loose that rodent with all those in a room full of people? That's not acceptable behavior. It's not a rodent, it's a ferret. Whatever it is, you know better than that. It's just trying to give you guys some excitement. Why, because Ted told you the party would be boring? A total snore. <sighs> Besides, we, we never met any harm. I mean, the lady who gave the party, she thought it was funny. She wasn't even mad. Millicent Greenlee? Told you it was all right? Yeah, she was laughing. And so was Mom and Tad. Your mother thought it was funny? Uh, not, not exactly. But Tad did. Yeah, of course. Well, it's not your job to entertain Tad Martin. Yes, sir. Son, you're a Chandler. You're my son. I won't allow you to behave like a delinquent. You're better than that. Do you understand me? You don't like Tad, do you? Are you actually standing on a subway train track? Your hair <laughs> looks uh, electrified. That's Biko. He is so fabulous. Turn the page. He has my hair out to here. You can see all my piercings in that shot. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah. This, uh, really something else. I'll stick with Ginger at the Glamorama, I guess. <laughs> Your portfolio is, is unique. Gritty. Very, very you. Liza, I sold BJ's. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were busy. Oh, no, we're done. No, no, take your time. I'll leave that here, take a look at it when you get a chance. Rain, right? New Kevin Cole campaign I just saw you on the side of a bus. You should see my billboard in Soho. Well, I'll have to check that out next time I'm in New York. Uh, this is Ryan Lavery. He's our advertising rep. Hmm. So maybe we'll be working together. Maybe. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much for your time. And I'll let you know. What was that about? Uh, uh, let's see. High concept. <clears throat> ah, what? We're thinking of developing a new show on style. We have viewer response, uh, interest. We have a time slot for it, so I'm interviewing uh, possible hosts and reporters. And Rain qualified? Well, her agent said that she's interested in making the crossover to spokesperson or, or actress. That's a little scary. Yeah. She's kind of wow. 
radical, isn't she? Yeah, she's a little burnt out. Oh, I tell you, I really wanted somebody natural, you know, down to earth, accessible, not too hard. Somebody who doesn't look like they're trying to race across town to get in their coffin. <laughs> but has her own opinions. Definitely. And a sense of humor. Oh, you know, we're dead if we don't have that. Liza, call off the search. I know exactly who you need. You have the answer to our prayers, and if you say Jillian, I'll have to bean you in the head with my stapler. Jillian. No, not Jillian. Put it down. I'm talking about <laughs> Haley. Haley? Yes. Think about it. She's got a great sense of style, fashion, beauty. She ran enchantment. She's beautiful. She's intelligent. She's warm. She's very funny. The audience would love her. So now you're her agent? Oh, consider me yours. Come on, Liza, admit it, she'd be great. I, I am not disputing that fact. I'm not at all, but Haley is very busy. She has a restaurant to run. SOS isn't even a year old. She and Mateo probably need some time with that. Well, actually, uh, no. Haley's not gonna be in business with Mateo much longer. Really? And you know that how? Um, well, she's been doing some reevaluating. She mentioned to me that she wanted to reinvent herself, you know, strike out in a different direction. Really? And I suppose Haley's road less traveled includes you? Right around the corner? Ted Martin has some very fine qualities. He's, um, he's witty, occasionally. He's, um, he's a good talk show host. Then why don't you like him? But it's not, it's not a question of not liking him. It's just that we don't see eye to eye on certain things. We have very different values. He would tell you the same thing. I heard you guys arguing last night. You said that he causes me to be very irresponsible. But he doesn't. I, I, he always checks my homework. And if he doesn't, he, he makes sure that mom does. This is a, about a lot more than homework, Junior. He's got a lot of rules about the internet. Let's not talk about Ted anymore, OK? I just don't want you to think he's a jerk. Well, I don't want you to think that your behavior last night was acceptable. But thank, thank God that's over. It's done. So let's just drop it, shall we? Um, don't you tell me something about that uh, winning soccer team of yours? Yeah, we just won our last game. Mom took a picture of me scoring a goal. Do you want to see it? Absolutely. Do you have it with you? Yeah. Oh, look at this. A. Us. Most influential person in my life. Ted Martin. Would I turn away if Haley found herself heading in my direction? No. I'd probably welcome her with open arms. Mm. What do you think of that? You're both consenting adults. It's none of my business. <laughs> the politically correct answer, thank mm. you. Now, how do you really feel? Look. She's Adam's daughter. She's family. Ryan, if, if Haley wants to be with you, fine. Mateo, fine. If she wants to be by herself, fine. Whatever she needs or wants is what I will support. We agree on that. Whatever makes Haley happy. You know, I gotta tell you, it wasn't too long ago you came in here and you told me you didn't connect with anything or anybody. It's nice to see that's changed. You told me it would take a little time and you were right. So it was just a question of time? <sighs> well, maybe it was a little more than that. Mm. You know, life can, can turn around on you in a heartbeat, as long as you're listening to your heart. Oh, gosh, I gotta go. <laughs> supposed to meet uh, Adam at the Valley Inn 20 minutes ago. I'm surprised he hasn't called. What do you think about Haley for the job? Uh, huh. uh, you know, maybe we'll get her on tape. And as for you and Haley, may the best man win. May the best man win. It was an assignment for my English class. There's another one coming up, uh, World's Greatest Dad. I'm writing it about you. 
Well, I certainly uh, would like to read that one. I hope it's an A, too. Yeah. Hello. Oh. Hi, Junior. I didn't know you were joining us. Hi, Liza. Uh, you made it. Here, uh, sit down, sit down. Uh, sorry I'm late. I just got busy, caught up at the station. Yeah, we had to go ahead. I didn't want Junior to, um, to be late for class. It's, uh, you better be leaving us about now. Okay. Aren't you taking me? Oh, no, George will take you. A waiter? Uh, would you see to it my son gets into my limo? The, the driver should be right outside. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bye, Liza. Bye. Sorry, Dad. No, 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 everything's fine. Thanks for joining me. What's up with you and Junior? Nothing. Just, uh, you should order, uh, forget about the uh, Santa. Adam, I can tell something's upsetting you. What is it? Dad Martin. He's taking my son away from me. Adam, it was a class assignment, a grade school essay. The most influential person in his life is Tad Martin. How did I let that happen? Adam, you can't control who your children idealize. I mean, when I was a child, I used to look up to my father's golf buddy. I thought he was the coolest guy on earth. Tad is great. He's a family man. He, he's a good man in general. He's, 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 he's an overgrown kid is what he is. And I don't want him but between me and my son. It's bad enough I have to contend with his brother in and out of my house at all times of the day and night. Now I understand why you're so protective of Colby. You feel like you're under attack. It's... My son idolizes a fool. Why shouldn't I expect him to look up to me and maybe even admire me? I have built an empire out of nothing, from absolutely nothing, and it's all gonna be his someday. Shouldn't he at least respect what I've done? Of course, he does. No, no, I don't think he does. I think he's, he follows Ted Martin around playing stupid pranks. No, Adam, he's a normal kid. You should feel grateful. But Liza, he is gonna grow up to, to be an Orsini swilling stand-up comedian if, if Ted has his way, and I'll be damned if I'm gonna let that happen. I, I just don't think that you should try to extract Tad from his life. Junior enjoys Tad. And I, I think that if you start interfering, it might backfire on you. I'm his father. I know what's best for my son. Adam, no one is disputing that you are his father. And everybody wants what's best for Junior. His mother, his stepfather, his stepmother, for, for that matter. And Junior is a very lucky boy who has two fathers who love him very much, just like Colby.